Which came first, the chicken or the egg? Good day, my name is Scott Forsyth. Today I'll be covering the topic of HTTPS bindings and host headers. If you're not already familiar with HTTP bindings, I encourage you to view the video from last week where I covered the four decision points that IIS makes when binding a web visit to a website. Today, however, we stumble across an issue when it comes to HTTPS. Let's take a look at this. If we go into IIS and we add a new binding and I select HTTPS, notice that the host name is actually grayed out. If we switch back to HTTP, it is not. So we have an issue here and the question is raised, did Microsoft not yet implement this? Why? What's our issue? What's the reason for it? And so today let's jump right in. The issue is actually a chicken before the egg issue. And so first, before to really understand it, we need to understand a little bit of this OSI model. And so basically, this is a model that describes the data as it's transferred back and forth between computers or even potentially within the same computer. And so some of the core network levels that really interest us today are the network layer is the IP address. When we visit, and again, remember, we have four decision points, which are our type, we have the IP address, we have the port, and we have the host header. So the IP address lives here at the network layer, the port lives at the transport layer, and the type it can determine through other methods. And But the problem we have is the host header lives here at the application layer. Well, that's not a problem whatsoever if we come in with HTTP, because uh, it's able to get this information. But when we come in over HTTPS, that information is completely encrypted. And so the when IS sees the request coming in, it's encrypted for it. And we have this issue right here. So the question is, which site do we use? We, I asked, we're trying to determine which site we're going to bind to. Well, first we need to decrypt the packet to get the host header. Well, which certificate do we use to decrypt the packet? Well, we don't know which certificate to use until we know which site. And so we have this loop that doesn't easily get resolved. In fact, and just shortly, I'll show you with Wireshark 2, we'll actually look at the data. It's pretty interesting to see for ourselves exactly what happens. So let me just say the same thing again one more time in a different way, is when the request arrives at the server, if it's HTTP, IIS has access to the IP, the port, and the host name. But if it's encrypted, the actual host name itself is encrypted within that packet, and therefore it's not available to IIS, and IIS cannot make a decision yet until it decrypts the packet. And of course it can't decrypt the packet until it knows which site to bind to because the decision on which certificate to use is made at the site level. So there's a couple things you may guess at first. Why doesn't just use a common certificate? Well, of course, a certificate has to match the particular request, so that won't work. Or why doesn't it guess which certificate? You know, what if you only have one certificate? Well, that's kind of the solution I'm going to cover next week, is there are some solutions that we have. But let's assume a server that has multiple websites and multiple certificates. Obviously, it can't just randomly guess which certificate to use, and it can't iterate through them. There's way too much overhead to try to go through them one by one. So you have to know exactly which certificate it needs to use before it can decrypt that packet. So the best solution is to not use host headers. If you can assign a dedicated IP for every site that requires SSL, so you give it a custom port, usually the port 443, and give every unique site its own IP address. That's the best solution. Plain and simple, there's nothing easier than that. However, I am going to spend next week's video covering SSL certificates and host headers in more depth in IIS, some options that we do have for us. Today we're just looking into what the problem is. Now let's take a look at Wireshark. This is pretty interesting when we see this. And so we'll clear this out. And just for my other, just offside the viewing area here, I have a web browser called up and I'm going to hit www.contoso.com, which I have hotwired to hit this site. And I'm going to request default.aspx. So I'm going to hit that right now. And you can see Wireshark, by the way, is a free tool. It's excellent for troubleshooting any kind of network things and to look at situations exactly like this one. So you can see a little bit, hey, are you around? Yes, I'm around. A little bit of handshaking back and forth. And then you can see the request, and let's kind of parallel these to the network layer. So we see, let's collapse this up. Okay, so at the Ethernet 2 layer, it parallels the data layer, and that's the MAC address. 
we see the internet protocol or the IP layer and that's your IP address, that's the network layer. You see the TCP in this case, the transport layer, and this has the source and the destination port, and that parallels the transport layer. Then we see here, here's the HTTP traffic coming in, and notice a few things. One is the GIP request for default.aspx. We want to come in, we want to use HTTP 1.1, and it actually includes the host information, so here it is right up here at the layer 7 level, and some other things too. We see the keep alives, the browser agent is sent, and we see which compression methods that the browser says that it supports, and of course our localization. Some information there. So this is handy, the information is available. Now, let's clear this out, and let's hit this one more time with HTTPS. So HTTPS colon slash slash, and we get the request coming in. Notice it's a lot chattier because it has a certificate to work with. And so we have some back and forth and client hello. This is all certificate layer, certificate, certificate related stuff until eventually we come to this application data. And so here we have notice that our uh, various layers here, we have the data layer, has the MAC address, no problem. We have the network layer and we have the transport layer that can't be encrypted because that's needed before it gets to the server. This is all pre-server kind of stuff. But the actual SSL layer itself, look at this. So if we actually go, here's the encrypted data, and look down here, you can even see it, of course it's dot dot dot, it doesn't show it all. But if we scroll down, it's, as far as we can tell, it's junk. It's all encrypted, we can't read it, it's not junk of course. But it's all encrypted, we can't read it, and this is where the host header is. And so here's where our issue is, when IS sees it, this is all it gets for the host header, and of course that makes no sense to it. And therefore we have our chicken before the egg issue has been laid before us. And so next week, what I want to do is get into the actual solutions that we have within IIS if you must share IP addresses. Uh, but if you don't, by all means, use a dedicated IP. That's going to be your best bet, and then you don't have to worry about host headers with HTTPS at all. Thanks for tuning in. Hope to see you again next week.